Let's do it. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody, fans of science and music, uh, to the Bash the Trashes mini show number two. And uh, my name is John Bertels, and my name is Karina Piaggio, and, and this, this is, is Roxy. Roxy, and we are the three of us, the co-directors of Bash the Trash Environmental Arts. We're presenting mini shows free for the world right now, so during this crisis so that you can tune into these uh, these mini shows um, anytime, basically, because we're showing them also on our YouTube live channel as well. And the recorded versions will be up there so you can play them later in case of technical issues or anything like that. Um, we're obviously in the midst of a crisis right now, and we feel it's really important that the arts are stronger and more important than ever. And we'd like to get some arts content out to kids at home, teachers, parents, and everybody, so you can have a little break during the day, find some cool things to do at home, and uh, learn a little bit about musical instruments and about how they work as well. However, since we have, like everybody else, lost all of our gigs, we are intent on keeping on educating and entertaining your kids. So if you want to hire us for your online um, classroom, we are still, all the content is there and all the educational punch. If you want to uh, hire us or make a donation, no amount is too small, no amount is too big. And uh, just to that point, uh, if you'd like to see a list of our live streaming uh, catalog, you can go to our website, which is bashthetrash.com. And if you like what we're doing with these streaming videos and you'd like to uh, donate and help us and help our musicians who have all lost their gigs as long as as, uh, as well as us. Um, if you're looking at our YouTube live channel on the home page on the upper right corner, you can see that there's a donate to BTT button and you feel free to uh, use that button at any time. But regardless of whether you use it or not, we're still going to present these wonderful mini shows for you. And we hope you get some cool ideas of what to do at home. Now today we're going to be taking a look at percussion instruments and we've got some of our percussion instruments here. We started up with a little thing this, uh, in the beginning of the show, but I'd like to turn this to one of our performers and she's going to show you all about the different kinds of percussion instruments using a really simple, cool thing. So I'm going to unmute myself, I'm uh, rather mute myself and I'm going to unmute Caitlin Cawley who is coming to you from Brooklyn. So Caitlin, I'm unmuting you supposedly. Hold on a second, I think, yep, okay. Hi all, um, so I am here to talk to you a little bit about uh, percussion instruments. Percussion instruments are really, can be anything. And uh, how I like to show everyone what a percussion instrument can be is with my tin can instrument. This is scientifically called the bash the trash bangy scrapey shaky multi kitchen utility drummy ditty thing, but it's just a tin can and it's a great way of showing people all the different ways that you can play percussion instruments. First of all, I have my beater here, my very professional pencil, and I can strike my instrument. It's pretty loud, huh? Kind of sounds like a cymbal or a drum. I can also scrape it. You see the ridges on the side? I have that. And finally, my favorite part, I have put inside of it some shaky stuff, some buttons and paper clips, and I can shake it. So a percussion instrument is anything that you can strike, scrape, or shake. Now we have some, 
slightly uh, more scientific words for how this type of instrument works, uh, this could be called an idiophone, which is anything that makes sound when it vibrates. And this top here, the plastic membrane, can be called a membranophone. Kind of like a snare drum or any kind of tom tom or something like that. So, if you use your imagination, anything that you can strike, scrape, or shake can be a percussion instrument. Back to back to John and Karina. Thanks, Caitlin. That was awesome, and thank you for the demonstration. And uh, you know, I see. I think we're going to get back to a. a thing that I see down below you there, but we'll take that out in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to turn it over to our uh, other musician, Brian Adler, today. And Brian Adler is in Brooklyn. And uh, Brian, I think you've got like a little studio of homemade stuff that you've put together, like a real drum set, right? Hold on, I'm going to unmute you. Try it from your end, Brian. There we go. Hi, everybody. That's right. Um, my name is Brian. I'm in Brooklyn. And uh, I do have a little studio here. And as I've been practicing social distancing, I've been looking around um, my home and taking uh, a couple walks in the park to see what pieces of clean, safe stuff that I could find lying around. Um, and, and building off of what Caitlin was saying, I found some things that could be um, a membranophone as well. So I found this bucket here. And I put it on a, when I put it on a big barrel, which um, is basically like a shell of a drum, um, I've got a, a drum that's kind of like a conga drum. And I've also got, um, my wife found this for me. This is a, uh, a mixing bowl that they made ice cream with. And when hung up, it has this beautiful gong-like sound. I'll play that some more later. I'm going to hang it right here for now. I also found a metal tray that I drilled a hole in. And this kind of sounds like a cymbal, a trashy cymbal. I've got some really clean pipes that are not too sharp or rusty. I put it on something um, very soft uh, and foamy so it gets a nice vibration. And I also found this piece of wood that was a, a can opener. Um, and that's kind of got a little marimba-esque sound. Um, another bucket here with some beads that kind of sounds like a snare drum. Uh, I made these hi-hats with the uh, official Bash the Trash multi-purpose shaky scrapey thing on top of a metal plate goes up and down like that. And then one of my favorite percussionists, uh, percussionists of all found this piece of metal. His name is Jamie Haddad. He found this piece of metal and he cut these slices into it. And it kind of sounds like this. So all of this together is my BTT uh, found object drum set with um, idiot, lots of idiophones and some membranophones and things like that. And I figured maybe we could play a little piece Caitlin and I, even though we're in different places uh, and dealing with some latency, maybe we can make something work with a drone and maybe I'll play a little groove and, and you could play on top of it and then we'll trade uh, trade eights for a little bit. Does that sound good? Ryan, that sounds great. But before we do, I want to introduce everybody to a not trash instrument, but it's one of my favorite instruments. This, what you see right here, all these keys here, this is a vibraphone. It has metal keys, uh, sort of like a xylophone. It's laid out like a piano the same way. And my favorite part, down at the bottom, I've got a pedal. And when I hold it down, all the keys can ring. So I'm going to play that, and Brian's going to play his drum set. And we'll, we'll play a piece together. Cool. We'll see you at the end.
All right. That well, was thank lovely. you. That was great. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to mute you folks, and uh, Karina and I are going to take over for a little bit here. And uh, the next step is we're going to show you how you can build your own percussion instruments at home. And um, we've got a couple of different uh, possibilities that we brought today. You know, one of our favorite instruments is obviously the coffee can scrapey shaky thing. And, you know, the simplest way to do that is just to have a coffee can, some kind like this. And, you know, when you have something like this, you just need to put some kind of materials inside it, some kind of a, a what we... Uh, technically called shaky stuff. Now we stay away, stay away from beans, rice. We don't like to use food to build instruments. Food is to be eaten, it's not to be done anything else with. But what we like to use, for example, is uh, you know paper clips or pebbles or little things like that. Even pennies or something can make a really loud shaker as well. And we have a sort of a container here of little things that are sort of very similar to that little rocks and pebbles and so forth. And you can see we've got several different kinds of shakers, but let's just make one really simple. This is the sour cream shaker right here. It's gonna take a little bit of our, our shaky stuff and just pour it into the bottom. And it's just really enough to cover the bottom of the thing. You don't really want more than that because the more stuff you have in it, the less sound you get from it and the more difficult it is to play. Now you're gonna of course cover it over and if you feel like there's any chance that the top is going to fly off and stuff is going to get all over the place. Well, you know, since you're cooped up with your parents at home, it's probably a good idea to keep good relations. And because of that, we're going to use some duct tape and put this on the top like this. And that way we can then do our shaker. And there's one little shaker right there. You can really make shakers out of almost anything. We've got two plastic containers, the little uh, drinking cups that we put together here like this, our coffee can scraper shaky thing. Um, anything that's got a top to it, you can use just about anything to create that. Now, another kind of instrument that we like to use is simple drums. And in this case, the drums that we are using are really more like idiophones because drums are really a very specific thing. They're called membranophones. And they have to do with with something that's flexible, a flexible, bendable membrane at the top, like this coffee can here. However, when we're using our can drums, which is something uh, kind of different, what we're basically going to be doing is using something where we're using things that don't have membranes on it, but are really idiophones. Now, idiophone means something where the whole instrument is vibrating. Idio means one, phone means sound. It means that the whole thing makes one sound. A cymbal is an idiophone. One bar of a xylophone is an idiophone. This can, that's an idiophone. The scraper, that's an idiophone. Roxy's not an idiophone. Roxy's a, a <laughs> but poodle. But she's very, very interested in everything you're doing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put two cans together. And you can do this with duct tape if you like. You can just duct tape them together. We tend to use rubber bands to put them together, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I'm just going to rubber band one and two to keep it nice and steady, just like that. And the, really the reason that we like to use the rubber bands as, as connectors is that you can now use this as a scraper as well. This is something similar to an instrument called a grido. Something like that. And the other thing, and this is a trick, is that, you know, these are not just percussion instruments. It's also a simple string instrument. Because you can play something like a little guitar right there as well. All right, so those are two very simple string in, uh, percussion instruments, and uh, we'll be showing you in further episodes other more complicated percussion instruments that you can build at home as well. We thought we'd close out today with a little mini jam, and then we'll tell you a little bit about what's on coming up on Thursday. But before we do our little mini jam, we'd like to big a, a big shout out to Brian Adler in Brooklyn and in Caitlin Cawley out in Long Island. Thanks so much, everybody. Hold on, I'm going to make sure to put you up there for a moment. So you can see, okay, wave goodbye now. That's it. Bye, okay. So that's great. Going to take you off again. And um, we're going to do a little mini jam. So let's set ourselves up. And uh, what are you going to play, Karina? I was going to ask you. Uh, uh, I like to play my, I like little things. So this is little and I like it. This I like because. So eventually I might borrow. Ah, ah there you, you go. go. You can have one better. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just going to play something. We're doing a little piece which we created many years ago. This is called Tiny Sounds. And we'll tell you at a, at a further, uh, further um, episode how you can do tiny sounds at home. It's kind of a fun jam having to do with improvisation. So in Tiny Sounds, one person starts 
and the other person jumps in, and then we'll see where we go from there. I'll start. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our little mini jam and our little mini percussion thing. We'll be showing you more instruments as we go. Uh, just to let you know, on Thursday, that's this coming Thursday, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be presenting a different program. This is called Spasm Bands to Spike Jones: Homemade Musical Instruments in Pop Culture. And it's a little sort of a show about how homemade instruments have been used from the late 1890s all the way up to the 1950s and why they've been used in pop culture. And it's got some really cool pictures and some interesting history and historical ideas as we go. So uh, once again, thank you for joining us, everybody. Check out our website, www.bashthetrash.com for more streaming ideas. And of course, donate our button at the top of our YouTube live button right there on the upper right corner of our YouTube channel. Thanks once again to Brian Adler and Caitlin Cawley. And be safe, be healthy, stay home, everybody. Stay home. Bye-bye.